Good morning and welcome to Ramp Church. So good to see you this morning and everyone. Go ahead and make your way in from the foyer, grab some tea and coffee. And before we get into our worship service today, um, we have a, a great service. Um, but we're going we're gonna to do a Remembrance Sunday observance to start the service. And I just want to read some verses uh, with you. And um, then we're going to observe a, a, a couple minutes of silence. And then we're going to pray. And then we're going to move into worship with, with our good friend Jonathan Ogden. So glad you're with us, Jonathan. So... Um, yeah, go ahead and make your way in. I'm going to read some verses. We can read these together. They're going to be on the screen for you. So just a few verses to kind of set up this Remembrance Sunday. First Psalms 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from my help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth lamentations 3 21 through 23 but this i call the mind and therefore i have hope the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness Isaiah 40, verse 31. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord requ require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Here in God's presence, we commit ourselves to work in repentance and faith for reconciliation between nations, that all people could live together in freedom, justice, and peace. We pray for all who in loss, disability, and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts, past and present, have been given and taken away. And I, I want to I read this Remembrance Sunday reading, and then we're going to have two minutes of silence and observance of this day. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. The going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Let's observe two minutes of silence.
Now let's pray this together, can we? Everlasting God, we remember those who have gathered, you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. We ask for that same peace to calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among all the nations. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jonathan, would you come up? Would you go ahead and stand to your feet? So thankful wherever you have come from today. Um, if you're part of the Ramp Church family, so glad you're here. If you're new to Ramp, um, really thankful to get to spend Sunday morning with you. We have uh, a good friend of ours, Jonathan Ogden. So glad uh, that you are here. Yeah, give him a warm Ramp welcome today. And whether you're familiar with, with Jonathan's music or not, um, I, I know this. For the next few minutes of our story together, we have an opportunity to find God. And I, I can't think of a better thing to do with the, with the next few moments of our lives. Whatever your weeks look like, whatever circumstances are in your life, you could be, uh, you could be in a valley or you could be on a mountaintop. Either way, you can discover who God is in ways you've never known him before. Maybe, maybe you're just exploring faith and the whole idea that there is a God is fresh to you. That's okay. This is, this is the right place to be today. But maybe, you, maybe you've been serving God longer than I've been alive. I want to tell you, there's more to know about who he is. I just want to encourage you as we start this worship time together that you turn your focus and attention heavenward. That today there are, there, you, there are people in the room, there's music happening, there's songs being sung, there's lyrics on the screen. But can we, get, can we go beyond those, those practical things and realize that there's a God who knows your name? He knew you would be here today. And He intends for you to leave today different than you came. And he's the source of that change and that transformation, that fresh purpose you're going to have today. Some of you just go ahead and already lift your hands and your eyes, your hearts towards heaven. Father, we're here for you. We're here for you. Everything in our lives is for you. Everything we have has come from you. And everything we do is for you, Father. And I thank you for the opportunity to see you in a fresh way today, to know you in a fresh way today, Father. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. There's no one else like you.
riches I heed not him? Riches I heed not, no man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only the first thing.
new to you and it's, um, it's a really simple song just about pouring out our love on the feet of Jesus like that lady that poured the alabaster jar out and, um, just as we're in this moment of worship just kind of like be in that headspace of just we're pouring out all of our love on Jesus' feet this morning so.
over you Romans 8 37 through 39 in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is anyone thankful for the love of God this morning? Come on. We're thankful, Jesus. We're thankful. Come on, just keep that applause going. Just straight to heaven. Our whole lives are poured out to you, Jesus. Our whole lives are poured out to you, Jesus. This is all for you, Jesus. Everything we do is for you, and you are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel like we just need to take a minute. And some of us who are in maybe trials where we don't understand what God is doing. And it doesn't seem like God is maybe even being God in this situation. I just feel like we need to take a moment and just worship Him in that mystery. Just worship Him in the mystery. 
those in the, the verse that comes to my mind is the verse in Isaiah that says those who are are dwelling in darkness without a ray of light what does it say it says trust in the Lord and rely on your God and Lord we do we just acknowledge here we are living in a bit of darkness sometimes Lord, and it's an honor, it's an honor, it's an honor to worship you in mystery, God. It's an honor to put our trust in you, Lord, when we don't understand, when we don't understand all that you're doing, Jesus. We put our trust in you, we rely on you, and we lean upon you. We put our confidence in the God who became flesh. We put our confidence in this man of sorrows, this man familiar with suffering, this God who carried our grief, who bore our sorrows, we put our trust in that God, that God cloaked with divinity yet human, that high priest who sympathizes with our weakness, we put our confidence and our trust in that God. Oh, we worship you. Just lift up your hands just a moment. Just a moment longer, Lord. Here we are in earth. We're in the earth realm, but our spirits are up there with you. We're up there with you. We're the victory signed, sealed, and delivered. And we put our trust in you, Jesus. You're worthy of our worship. When we don't understand, you're worthy of our worship. When we don't see what you're doing, you're worthy of our trust. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Come on, just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer, Lord. You don't have to tell us. We trust your character, God. You don't have to show us the full plan. We know who you are. We trust who you are, God. We put our trust in who you are, Lord. You are a good God. Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy his loving kindness never ends from generation to generation oh we put our trust in you Yahweh the Lord the God of mercy the God of compassion his anger lasts a moment his favor lasts a lifetime we put our trust all of it all of it we put all our trust there in Jesus Christ we transfer trust we transfer it from our problem solving ability we transfer it there to jesus we take our trust and we fully put it in jesus christ the author and finisher of our faith alpha and omega beginning and the end oh the one who holds the keys of death hell and the grave king above all kings lord above all lords we put our trust there in you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're reliable. You can be counted on in mystery. You can be counted on for all eternity. You can be counted on. You're reliable. You're steadfast. You do not change. We trust in you. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, we are the remnant. We are the remnant that love you, God. We are the remnant that love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you back, 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 Jesus. All our lives loving you back. All our lives loving you back. All my life loving you back. All my eternity loving you back. All myself loving you back, Jesus. Oh. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord! Holy is His name! 
He's the high and holy one. And here we find him dwelling with the lowly ones. He's the high and holy one. Yet here we found him dwelling with the lowly ones. Dwelling with the broken ones. Here we find him, God of all power and glory, binding up the brokenhearted. Here we found him bandaging our wounds. Here we found this God man. Here we found him dwelling with the lowly, reviving the hearts of the faint. Here we find him, here we find him in the broken places among the poor spirited. Here we are, Lord. Here we find you. Come on, we found your power, God. It's in our weakness. Here you are, Lord. Here you are in the empty place, filling it up with your presence. Here you are, Jesus, in the barren wilderness. Here you are bringing water from a hard place, God. Yes, God. Breaking our boxes, Lord. Showing up unsuspecting you, Lord. We weren't expecting you, God. In the suffering, we found glory. In the suffering, we found glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God of suffering, God of glory. Oh, we say yes to you. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you. Do you think... We say yes to you, God. And it's for you, Lord. Oh, what is this? What is this about? This is for him. This is for him. This part's not for you. This part's for him. But we're changed when we behold him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, hearts are being healed. Hope's being revived. Power of God is present to heal. Thank you, Jesus. If you need healing, just lift up your hands right now. If you need healing of brokenheartedness, lift up your hands right now and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad that it's not about you? small world and it's all about us thank you God it's about you it's for you yes Jesus now just tell him as a corporate body right now just say Lord it's for you and it's about you we lay down our preferences we lay down our opinions we lay down our suggestions we lay down our plans we relinquish control to you Lord have your way Hallelujah. And before we before we dismiss, I want I want to I know this may cause a little bit of temporary chaos, but I really want to ask all the children to come down here and the youth. We're about to dismiss the kids and the youth, but in prayer, I just was so just go ahead and come make your way just right here and then we're going to send you to your class. If you're in the youth or if you're in your children's church and parents, you may need to come with small ones. I just want him to fill this front. Hallelujah. When we were in worship this morning. When we were in worship this morning. You just come a bit closer. Yeah, just come up here. You can stand right on this carpet if you want. Look at these beautiful young people. Don't you just love to look at them? They're all so cute. When we were in prayer, and I know that some of the youth are back here as well, I was, I was overwhelmed with gratitude for God that he revealed himself to me as a child. I don't know how, I don't know why, I'm not saying I deserved it. I don't think, you know, my parents were just humble people serving the Lord. Nobody was doing anything special or fancy in our house. We were just serving Jesus and God revealed himself to me, his power manifested and touched my life 
And I want you as a faith family, I just wanted you to see these kids. And I wanted just to raise expectation in our faith community that the power of God that touches human flesh can be revealed to these young people. And it doesn't have to be fancy settings. It was like in the car and in my bedroom and at the church altar that God's power overpowered me. And I knew he was real. And I knew he loved me. So I want you to stretch your hands this way. Now kids, I know you know this. God is not a respecter of persons. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. He can reveal himself to you. And you've already seen little bits of him. You've seen little glimpses of him. And there's more. So Lord, we just declare over all these young people, Lord, that your power is manifested, that they know you are real and that you are the God of love. We declare the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest on these young people. That like David, they will be able to say, I have seen you in the sanctuary, O oh God. I have beheld your power and your glory. Your love is better to me than life itself. We declare that over them. That they will see you, God. They will behold your power and your glory. Your love is better than life itself. And we release them. We release them. We release them into your hands. We release them into your presence. We release them, Jesus, into your plan. And we thank you for what you have for us, for what you have for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we just come against every lie of the enemy, every narrative of the enemy, saying, I can't experience God. I'm not made for God. You were made for his presence. This is the real you, the you that loves Jesus. And thank you, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest in our midst, God, we can have more of you. And we declare freedom in Jesus' name to enjoy your presence. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, well, our young um, youth, year seven, year seven to year nine, are going to have class. And then uh, the older youth, you guys are in here. And then kids, you can go party in kids' church for a minute. And then we'll come get you. And while they're doing that, turn and greet somebody and just give Jonathan a, um, a thank you with a round of applause. One more time, just give Jonathan Ogden just a massive, massive thank you. Thank you so much. Genuinely, um, I know that that was a half hour of our lives um, and receiving incredible ministry, but I know it's been 
uh, a life laid down that's, that's enabled us to have that moment. So such a very warm welcome to you. Um, whatever has brought you to Ramp Church today, really, really grateful to spend the next, uh, the next little bit with you. And here's what I know. Uh, you've come into the presence of a God of hope. And he gives hope um, in the midst of any trial or circumstance. And, I, and that's really more than anything today. Um, I, that's what I want you to experience. I don't want you to experience primarily a church or a brand or a personality or a leader or a style of music. I hope today the thing that leaves an impression on you is the God who knows your name and who has hope to give to you. Amen? Um, I, do, uh, I do realize that sometimes um, exploring um, faith and getting to know a church can be a challenging thing, so we, we try to make that as, as simple as possible. If you are new to our faith family, we'd love to get to know you a bit, and that's why there's a welcome card in your seat. Um, you can also scan the QR code down there at the bottom to, to get the digital version, which is a bit easier. Um, to, to handle, but I would love to, I'd love to meet you if you're new to our faith family and hear your story. Um, I'll be hanging around after service for just a little bit and would just love to hear, hear your story and meet you. So thank you for taking the time to be a part of our service. I am going to take the, uh, the tithes and offerings now. If you're new to Ramp Church, no obligation to give, but as the Ramp Church family, we love to give and everything um, that you give goes into helping us create spaces um, for people to encounter God. That's our passion here at Ramp Church is to create spaces just like this. And as a charity, the way that we're the way that we survive is by the the, the generosity of people just like you. So if you do want to give, there's an envelope in your seat. There are also giving details on the screen. You can give. Um, by card, you can give by cash, check, bank transfer, you can even give by text. So, so many ways to give. And if you've yet to fill out a gift aid declaration uh, and you're eligible for that, I would love to, to just encourage you to do that. You can do that on the envelope or online. And what that enables us to do is it enables any charity in the UK to, to, get, to get 25% of your gift from the government. And so it's a really cool way to make your giving go further. And it's at no additional cost to you. So if you've never done that, would you just take like a, a moment right now and just fill out uh, that gift aid declaration either on this envelope. It's literally on this right-hand section. It, 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 it'd take less than 30 seconds to do. And then drop that in the collection um, bucket. And you don't have to do anything. Um, we, we connect with the home office and the rest goes from there. So thank you so much for being a part um, of, of what God's doing through the Ramp Church family. And everything we're doing online, everything we're doing in person, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week, and the way we're able to partner with other organizations in the city is 100% possible because of your partnership in giving. So thank you so much. If you're joining us online, thank you. And I want to invite you to be a part of this moment as well. So go ahead and, um, and prepare those offerings. And I want to pray over you while you guys um, uh, receive from the people. Father, thank you for this opportunity to partner with what you're doing through Ramp Church and in this city with our finances, with our giving. And Father, we place it into your hands knowing that this practical act um, can turn into supernatural fruit, can turn into eternal fruit. And we, we just ask that you take every gift given today and that we can steward it for, for the sake of your name and the sake of your kingdom and this city that you love so much. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Really one, one announcement today. If you are interested um, in serving at Ramp Church, we have a serving booth in the foyer. So this is a, a really cool season at Ramp Church where we're returning to in-person gatherings. And we were online for 18 months and who saw us online before you actually came to an in-person gathering? Can I see hands? Like, lift that high. Yeah, many of you experienced us online before you saw us in person. And um, I'm, I'm not sure where you came from today, but I'm pretty sure the Longest Drive Award 
goes to our friends right here. Three and a half hours drove to be a part of Ramp Church today. Thank you, guys. Um, what an incredible blessing. And you guys, we really connected online in the middle of lockdown, and, and you've been a part of our online spaces, prayer meetings, our online communities, which were just incredibly vibrant um, through lockdown, and God's done incredible things in your lives, and I wish we had, I wish we had all day to even hear some of those stories. Um, some of them made my day just a little while ago to hear them before the service, but you guys came up to just celebrate um, this season and what God's done. So would you just welcome them to Manchester? It's amazing that, that technology has, has allowed us to do that and to worship together and, and really walk in relationship together here three and a half hours apart. So if, if you are new to Ramp Church and you want to get involved, you want to form relationships, communities is a great way to do that, but serving is an incredible way to do that. And when you, when you get your hands um, on something together with other people. And so there's a serving booth uh, out front. Somebody will be there ready to kind of answer your questions about the different ways you can be involved with Ramp Church. You can, it, you can be involved in media and, um, and, and making these online services happen all the way to, to being involved in outreaches in our city and a lot of things in between. So if you're interested in that, definitely check us out. In the foyer, but I am excited today to hear a word um, from my wife, Stacy Reeser. Stace, would you go ahead and, and come on up, make your way? Up. Would you help me welcome <laughs> Stacy Reeser? Oh, bless you guys! Thank you. Well, you may be seated. Thank you. I'm, I'm not gonna actually. I'm not gonna preach a full word this morning, although I have one prepared. Um, I just. Um, for time's sake, and just because I don't really feel like much else is needed, I feel like we could feast on what God has already done in prayer and in worship here. And um, gosh, I feel so grateful for what he has already deposited in us this morning. But I want to just share about, you know, this time of year, so November, um, is usually a time where I personally, like, I start just leaning into the idea of Thanksgiving, of giving thanks is what I mean by that, gratitude, reflecting on what God has been doing in the year and looking forward to the next year. And um, I was chatting with Nathan the other day and we, we, get, we got started on talking about gratitude and how powerful, you know, giving thanks is for us as humans. Um, just even if you take, if you take all the, the worthiness of God out of the equation and you take every command and the scripture out, just all the science the, that people are discovering that's proving just how beautiful obedience to God is when, you, when he says give thanks and you give thanks and now you can look on Google and find like bucket loads of research about why this is one of the best things for you to give thanks. And, um, and I've just, I feel like as a people right now, that I want to just help posture our hearts um, to, that, to that sound of gratitude and what God has done. Even in the midst of what I know, lots of challenges, especially in the midst of challenges, to perceive God and to recognize him. And, um, you know, I know some of you guys have had had a really hard year and and we share those struggles. In prayer, we feel the pain. We carry that with you. Um, but all the more, just the beauty of being able, how gratitude enables us to tune in to the goodness of God in the land of the living right here, right now. So um, at the beginning of the year, I asked the Lord, you know, for a verse to just help anchor my heart. And the verse that I was really led to was... Psalm 27. And you know, it wasn't like when I say I was led to a verse, it's like I feel sometimes that maybe when I'm, when I'm going into a new year, um, I'll, I'll ask the Lord, Lord, what's the word? And, and I'll, I'll just have a verse that's kind of like a sticky note on my heart. It's like it's there. It's not necessarily like Gabriel shows up in my room and is like, hello, Stacy, this is the word of the Lord for you this year. But it's more of just discerning what's the Holy Spirit highlighting to me. What verse just keeps coming up to my mind when I'm asking the Lord that question? Or what verse is like on the pages just like, oh, Stacy, you've got something in there. You've got to dig a little deeper in there. 
And I encourage you guys to, to ask the Lord um, as you are leaning in to leaving this year and, and starting you know, next year, what's the Lord got for you? What's the word that's going to anchor you this year? And you hear from him for yourself. And, um, and then you'll be, I, you know, you'll, it, it may not be like, oh, the, the most life shattering, amazing revelation, but it'll sustain you. And that's the point of the word of God is to sustain you. It's not always to wow you. It's just to sustain you, to keep you going. And so, um, Psalm 27 verse 13, verse 13 and 14. And um, Anarchy, I'm so sorry. I do this to Anarchy all the time. Anytime I have verses and then I never use any of the verses that I give her. So she's just flying by the the, uh, seat of her pants. But uh, Psalm 27. And I felt like even I gave this word. um, So I want to talk to you about gratitude for just a minute and about posturing yourself to recognize the Lord. So this is the word that I was declaring um, throughout this year in verse 13. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So sometimes around this time, you know, you start wanting to like reflect or you feel like the pressure to like start thinking about, you know, oh, well, what has God done this year? And sometimes, sometimes when it comes to like the ending of a season, you could almost feel shut down. Like you don't want to look back because it was just so bad. <laughs> you don't want to look back and you're scared to look forward because you don't know what's coming. And so you're just like, I'm just going to not look behind or forward and I'm just going to put my head to the ground. But then you're not able to take in everything that God has done. You're just, you're just surviving. You can miss what God is doing unless you take time. To remember, like God has commanded us throughout the word of God so many, is to reflect, to look back, to see where was God? What prayers did he answer? And seeing that and letting the Holy Spirit show you where he was, then empowers you. It silences the voice of shame that keeps you from wanting to reflect on your life, right? Sometimes we don't want to look back because it's like shame, shame, shame is so loud, And then we don't want to look forward because fear is so loud. But when we can process with God and hear his perspective and tune into him, looking back, looking forward, then we can grow. And you don't just grow because you just survive through things. No, you grow when you actually think and take things in and process with God. You process with God. You process with the people of God. You process in the presence of God. And you can grow through things. But growth isn't automatic, right? It's intentional. It's you working with the Holy Spirit. It's you being unafraid to face yourself and to face your life in the power of God. So um, I just feel before, you know, I'm going to call in a minute. We're going to go back into worship. But I want us to posture ourselves to just Look back and find God. What prayers has he answered for you this year? Who has he blessed you with? You know that your brain cannot think a negative and a positive thought at the same time? It's like, apparently, it's not possible. Now, I was like, well, we could try it, but I don't know. <laughs> try to think positive, and then, but we, we know, okay? We know that when you are intentional about taking your thoughts captive, giving thanks, seeing God, not suppressing the pain, not denying pain, but in the presence of pain, acknowledging the pain, and saying in the suffering, I see a glimmer of glory, then it can help you come above the grief and the disappointment and right above it instead of sinking beneath it. And we're, we're meant to be on top of the waves, right? Walking on top of the waves, not sinking in fear uh, because we've lost sight of God. So when gratitude, it helps us to recognize what God has done, to recognize what he's doing. And you know, I was so intrigued because and there's a verse in Isaiah where the Lord is describing the rebellion of Israel and all of those who worship idols. And I'm coming in just in Isaiah 5, verse 12. I'm coming into this passage where he's talking about the idolatry of these other nations and the rebellion of Israel. And, they, and the Lord says about them, they furnish wine and lovely music at their grand parties, lyre and harp and tambourine and flute, but they never think about the Lord or notice what he is doing. 
They never think about the Lord or notice what he is doing. And this was the sin of Israel, right? They came through, they saw these, mir- these miracles, and then they forget, and they get thrown into idolatry. And, and I just feel like the Lord's just wanting us to just slow down, recognize the Lord. This is a way we worship him. Acknowledge what he has done. The enemy, and you've heard me say this so many times, but the enemy always wants you to get hung up on what has not yet happened. Because if you can get stuck there, then your heart can be, it's like a downward slide into a little bit of, you know, the disappointment turns then into a little bit of resentment. And then the resentment turns into a bit of entitlement. Well, God, you deserve, I deserve a breakthrough. I deserve a miracle. I deserve your answering my prayers. And then that separates us from God. Because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we need to recognize what God is doing and see and perceive what he's doing. And be able to look ahead and just prophesy, look ahead, and this is what I did. And what I, I still continue to do, if there's something that's kind of like stressing me out about the future or that I'm unsure about, I just look ahead and I'll just say, Psalm 27, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know I'll see the goodness of God there. I'll see the goodness of God in the land of the living up there because God's ahead of us. Come on, he's not catching up to us. I know, you, I know we think in our intercessory prayer life that God's catching up to us, but he is ahead of us. He's ahead of us. And he's behind us, thank God, mercy, following me, cleaning up all these messes I make, like a parent following a toddler, just cleaning up with goodness and mercy. And I want, I want, you know what I want? I want you to, I want you to walk in the joy of the Lord. You know, gratitude is essential. It's like the fount of all other virtues. Gratitude, the fount of all the other virtues. Everything about your Christian behavior and your holiness and all these great things, it's supposed to spring from this overwhelming revelation of the grace of God in your life. Grace spurs on gratitude. I mean, think about it in your own life. If somebody gives you something, if you pay for something, right? If I pay for something, then I'm not like, I may say thank you, but I'm not like feeling it. I'm like, you better give that to me. I just paid for that. (laughs) But when it's undeserved, I feel so grateful. Why, why do we sometimes slip into this, ungr- this, this cranky Christianity? It's because we slip into entitlement and we think we've earned something from God and we've forgotten the grace of God that is undeserved, unmerited. And it's not just undeserved, unmerited favor and salvation. The grace of God is also that power for right living. It's that Hebrews 4, 16, let us come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in our time of need. It's undeserved. And when we can, we can be awakened again to the grace of God and see that we didn't deserve it, we didn't earn it, even the ability to produce wealth, Deuteronomy 8, even that ability that you've got to make all that money, that came from God. It all came from him. Grace then spurs this gratitude. And gratitude leads us to these generous lives. Freely we have received, freely we give. Freely we have received, freely we give. So let's check our hearts. How are we taking in what God has done? I'm not saying, I'm not talking about like an unhealthy gratitude that denies suffering. I'm talking about in the midst of the fire, there's a fourth man. I'm talking about when you go through rivers of difficulty, he's there with you. I'm talking about the fires where he's there. I want you to tune in. Lord, show me. And then I want you to find the goodness of God, and I want you to talk about it. Talk about it. God likes to be talked about. He want you, I want to talk about him. I don't want to just be like, oh, you know, this private conversation. I love that, you know, that Misty Edwards song. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. Like God is in the conversation. He's hearing what you're saying. He wants to hear you talk about what he's done. And it's not because it changes him. It changes you. And it changes the atmosphere of your house. Can I get an amen? 
Okay, I, I heard it once said that the most important attribute of a spouse, this is like a God-fearing man who'd walked with the Lord for many decades, and he was asked, well, what's the most important thing to, to look for in a spouse? And he said, the most important thing is, are they grateful? Because great, being grateful springs all other virtues. And we, don't, we, we, can, we can talk about behavior changes, we can talk about all that, but if we don't just get to the foundation of, do you realize you've received the grace of God that you weren't deserving of? You didn't earn it. You didn't strive for it to get it. It was bestowed on you freely. And from that, all of our outward behavior is this big thank you to God. When, we, when God looks down at Ramp Church and he, and, and he sees all of us and he sees all the things we're doing, he sees the fasting and he sees the prayer and he sees the outreach, he sees all the serving, oh, he sees the laying on of hands, he sees the prophesying, he sees all these things, he sees the giving of the money, he sees right through all that. He sees straight to the heart of the why we're doing that. It's naked and exposed before him. Our why. All the time. We can't hide it. And I want him to look down at us and say, oh, look at those ramp people. Jesus, they never got over what you did for them. They never got over what you gave to have them. Come on. I want our whole lives to just be a big thank you to God. Just a big thank you Jesus we're not having to prove anything or work for anything we're here as these undeserving recipients of this lavish love no matter what background you came from no matter how many times your grandma prayed and fasted no matter how much you speak in tongues we are all just these these recipients of the grace of God and we can never graduate from that and slip into this entitlement because then we'll start coming into God's presence and we'll start feeling like he owes us something like Lord haven't you seen my fasting haven't you seen my prayer don't you owe me a miracle and Lord forgive us for that but that's the human tendency our human carnal nature will always default down to self-righteousness down to entitlement downward to those things where we are somehow the center of it but it's the grace of god that keeps us orbiting around christ and the life he freely gave to give us and i want to encourage you i had mentioned this the other the other week just about watching your mouths and I've, I've said this before. Oh, I hate saying this because I feel the conviction on my life when I say it. It's like you put those words on those scales, right? You put your words on the scales. And, and where does it tip? Where does it tip? Does it, does it tip in all of the petitions and all the requests and all the complaining and all the, um, the hardship, the woe is me? Or does it tip in the gratitude and the praise and so you're going to have both some weeks. You may have like, whoa, a lot of the, you know, pouring out your complaint to God. But the balance of your life, come on, needs to be this fragrance of thanksgiving. This fragrance. Just in closing, I've, I remember this one story. And I don't know why I'm going to, I just felt led to say this, even though, it, just go there with me. But it's in Proverbs 25. And I was young, newly married to Joe. And uh, we had just had a little baby. We were living in this like very small little duplex apartment in Hamilton, Alabama. And I was spending time in prayer while Joe was at work. And, and um, I had to stay home with the kids. Just, and I remember just praying. I was like, Lord, I just pray for Joe to have a raise. I pray that he gets a raise, God. <laughs> And the more I prayed it, the more I felt it. I was like, yes, yes, Lord. What do you have to say about this, God? God, I thank you for provision. I know provision is your will, right? Provision is your will. So I'm going to ask you, Lord, for a raise, God, today. Yes. And um, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you think about this? After I was praying for a long time about it, I opened the word of God. And this was the verse that I opened to. Are you ready for it? You're not ready for it. This was the verse, Proverbs 25, 27. This is in the Living Bible. 
just as it is, just as it's not good to eat too much honey, it is not good for people to think about all the honors they deserve. <laughs> that was the verse that I opened to when I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you think about that? Now, I'm not against asking for raises. I'm not talking about that. But that verse, thinking about the honors you deserve, that is the path of entitlement. When we think, and we know this about honor, we don't seek honor. Honor's meant to be given. That's your relationship with honor. You never seek it. You only give it. And I just, I just feel like, you know, you've got to trust God. And then the next verse he gave me was this verse about um, in Colossians 3 where it says Christ is actually in your employer and everything you're doing is for him. God is so faithful. He so cares about our character more than the outward things. And I want you to position yourself just to receive his grace again. And Jonathan, will you come? And we're just going to close in a time of prayer and worship. You know, the verse I said in Isaiah 5, they didn't recognize the Lord. And then Isaiah, another verse, remember it says, the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? And then all throughout the New Testament, he's saying, be sober-minded, be alert, be awake. I want to call you, Ramp Church, into a state of reflection, of really waking up to your life and wake up in gratitude and then express that gratitude in a culture that is so complaining, our human nature, our human tendency. What can you do to give rhythms of gratitude? At the dinner table, in the, in the evening, can you go around and give thanks? Are you like, that's so cheesy? No, what, what is it that you need to do to make gratitude part of your life? What people has the Lord connected you to this year that have blessed you? Have you told them that you're grateful for them? Have you released it to your spouse, to the people in your own house? It doesn't have to just be extravagant things. It's the little things. I love what Dietrich Bonhoeffer says in his book on community. He says, in the Christian community, thankfulness is just what, is, what it is anywhere else in the Christian life. Only he who gives thanks for little things receives the big things. We prevent God from giving us the great spiritual gifts he has in store for us because we do not give thanks for daily gifts. We think we dare not be satisfied with the small measure of spiritual knowledge, experience, and love that has been given to us, and that we must constantly be looking eagerly for the highest good. And then we deplore the fact that we lack the deep certainty, the strong faith, and the rich experience that God has given to others, and we consider this to be pious. We pray for big things, and we forgive to give thanks for the ordinary. What can you do? to reflect, to look back and see the goodness of God, to recognize the goodness of God, to magnify that. What can you do to reflect and see what is God doing in my life right now? What are these challenges teaching me about him? How am I finding him here in the suffering? And looking ahead, how can I look ahead and just say, Lord, I don't know what lies ahead, but I know I'll see your goodness there. And I won't be afraid. You've proven yourself. Let's stand to our feet. I want to call the prayer teams up. And if you need prayer, maybe you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Today's a good day to do that. If you hear his voice today, don't harden your hearts. That means, hey, it's a good day for salvation today. And people can pray with you. If you need healing, if you have a burden, you just want to lay down in the presence of God then I encourage you to come forward and receive prayer. Do you have to come forward? No, but I bet it'll be more powerful if you do because where two people can agree together, their God is just to blow up and just blow out and show himself. So Lord, we thank you and we just position ourselves. We position ourselves, Holy Spirit, to look at you with great thanksgiving, to receive your grace. Thank you for your undeserved privilege, God, the undeserved privilege of being in your presence. Thank you for the power to live rightly. You know, some of you, as we close in worship, you just need to maybe even confess and repent of entitlement. Maybe confess and repent for complaining, griping and grumbling. And ask the Holy Spirit for just a fresh infilling to reposition your heart and your mind to give him the thanks that he's worthy of.
the goodness of God. So now I love you, Lord, again. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. Come on, Ram Church. Come on. 
Has he been good to anybody in, in this building? Come on. Has he been good to anybody in this building? In spite of the challenge, in spite of the pain, in spite of the question, in spite of the darkness, sometimes even the very presence of hope is a sign that he's with you and that he has not left you. Father, we're grateful. We're thankful today. I thank you, Father, that we can see you, that we can sense your nearness, and we can sense that your guidance and your direction every step of the way. Thank you, Jesus. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. I thank you that you're leading us and teaching us, Holy Spirit, how to be a people of gratitude, a people of thanksgiving. First and foremost to you, but also to each other, Father. I, I just pray for fresh words of gratitude and thank, thanksgiving on our, on our mouths, on our lips to one another. Father, there's a culture of thanksgiving in Ramp Church. There's a culture of honor in Ramp Church, Father, of celebrating the goodness of God. In Jesus' name. Well, we're going to continue just this atmosphere right here of worship and prayer and thanksgiving, but I am going to go ahead and dismiss the service. I am so, so glad to spend this morning with you. And just a reminder, Ramp Church is not an event on a Sunday morning. We're a community of people who, who lives every day um, with the desire to, to know more uh, about Jesus and to follow him. And so if you want to if you, if you just learn more about Ramp Church, um, I would just encourage you just to, to have a conversation with one of our staff. I'm going to hang around for a bit afterward. You can also get, get involved with serving or our, our communities here at Ramp Church are great ways to get plugged in, but I'm thankful, thankful to spend this morning with you, and you are loved, so I hope to see you guys soon, feel free to go get your kiddos from Ramp Kids, and hang out and pray for a bit longer in here, or hang out and, and, and have some conversations in the foyer, thanks for being here guys, bless you. Thank you.